you voted for it. So I'm going to give it to you. And I'm going to give it to you raw. <laughs> I came out wrong, but I meant it. Because this is the final chapter of the Seven Secrets story. And it is the most bloody. So if you have a weak stomach, don't watch this video. And if you are lost, go check out the playlist below. Now let's get into it. We follow, or rather we see, the life so far. We see a child meeting his father for the first time. We see that same child fighting his first battle at the same time. We see the life this child had built for himself with his friends and family. And then we see the child, Casper, with the severed head and his corpse on the floor, with his mother next to it crying. And sadly, this was his fate, as foretold in one of the written futures. Because as we learnt in the last video, the fourth secret was the secret of the future. Three possible futures to be exact, and three of them were so bad, the only future worth living in is the one where Casper is dead. And that, sadly, is going to happen. Because for a split second, we see what causes Casper's death. But back in reality though, that newbie had seen the future and she made it clear she can't kill Casper. She grew up with Casper. So Amon made it clear, okay, I believe you, but will you step out of the way and let me do what I need to do? And she said, yes, I will not stand in your way. Amon, looking to his partner, realized that he was walking away. But he was rudely interrupted by one of his henchmen who had a call. Headquarters was gone, up in flames, thousands of people dead. At the hands of the so-called heroes of the story, Titus was celebrating this massacre and Caspian couldn't comprehend it. Why did they have to die? Titus just made it clear that they killed my friends, so they had to die. And I'm sure your mother will accept this because she feels the same way I feel. Only to look at Ava, Shodi was bleeding to death. She got shot inside. Caspian offered to fly her, but the queen didn't trust flight. Loading Ava up in a Rolls Royce, she drove all the way to the airport. The guards even tried to stop her, but she said, lay down your freaking weapons and open the gates now. Because on her private jet, they had a medical team. Rushing Ava in, the treatment began. And thankfully, she was under stable condition. This is when we find out that this queen was low-key part of the order. She was sent to the royal family to protect the queen at that time. But she fell in love with the queen. Both of them got married and she joined the line of succession. And when someone tried to assassinate the queen and her family, they succeeded. But she was too skilled. She knew how to escape an assassination attempt. But before she could make up her mind and give him the direct point, she was interrupted. Ava wanted to talk to the queen, but this was unacceptable. I mean, Ava's son just realized he could fly, and the first person she wants to talk to is the queen, not him. Unacceptable. He crashed straight through and asked his mother straight up, what the hell is wrong with you? You kill thousands of people. And she said, yeah, I'd do it again. Shocked at this response, he went to his next question, what the hell am I? I can freaking fly. Even the fairies knew I could fly. What are you not telling me? And she fell silent. He screamed, tell me the truth. And she was still silent because her job is keeping secrets. That was her actual job. And so he did something he's never meant to do. He left the secret and said he was going out for a walk. But in this case, he could fly. So he just opened the jet's door and he jumped out to get some fresh air. Soaring through the skies like actual Superman, it gave him peace, it gave him clarity. So when he returned, he came back with a killer attitude and apologized to his mother, asking her to please don't keep this shit from her any longer. As soon as she knows it's valid to tell him, she should just tell him. And so she promised that one day, you will know everything, I promise. Back with the other seekers and keepers though, they were in a safe haven until they heard a sound coming from outside. The strongest of them went to check it, only for her to meet Kanto. He was injured, he was bleeding, and she didn't know he was the snake. So she took him in. What a bad move, because something was coming and he was going to be the cause. We see that same thing chasing young Caspian in his dreams. And oh my God, 
it had a scary face. When Caspian woke up, his mother was way better. So it was time to move because they couldn't be here for long. Caspian stepped out for a second and saw that Titus brought him and his mother some flowers. He felt bad for all the bullying he did while they were younger. But Ava didn't want no flowers. Ava was a woman of action. She just said, let's go. Back with Conto though, he was finally stitched up. So the other keepers went to keep watch. And they knew something was suspicious. All secrets in one building is never a good idea. Only for him to notice that Kanto was outside in the rain. He asked why is he outside and Kanto simply apologized and he pushed a button which activated a briefcase right next to them. In one big swoop he had killed two more of his closest friends and his lover Amon came with his forces to finish off the rest. And Jesus Christ it was sad because he came into the building claiming he was here to rescue all of them leading them directly to their deaths. As soon as the keeper of the fifth secret popped his head, they shot him in the chest. He was dying and he was surrounded, not knowing the biggest traitor was behind him. So he gave his secret to his closest friend, the only guy he could really trust. And he said, leave here. Amon could never get this secret. It is literally the most dangerous. And we have seen secrets that kill continents. This is the most dangerous. Jesus Christ. The keeper of the second secret called to Kanto, telling him to come along. We can escape through our portal. While the last guy tried to lay down cover fire, but Amon just shot him in the head. He was dead for good, but the portal was open and he was about to escape with Kanto. When Kanto stabbed him in the back, vicious. He didn't kill him, unlike Amon. So the keeper of the second secret promised that if I'm free, I'm coming for your head. And that is where everything changed. Because at that moment, that was when Amon got the secret he was never meant to touch. The secret to change the world. And from the distance, we hear a helicopter pulling up. They thought they had time. They thought they could escape through the portal. But they didn't know Caspian could freaking fly. He soared through the sky like a bullet. Flying through the portal and catching up with everyone. And he stood before Amon. Determined to end it all tonight. But the thing is, Amon knew what he had to do. Amon knew the secrets of the future. We see the trainee start to cry because she knew at this moment something was about to happen. Something that would spell the end of the world. Amon unleashed the briefcase. Amon unleashed a secret that should never be unleashed.